but walked out with him. He didn't. He, he missed his historical moment, and he didn't walk out. Well, in fact, uh, you know, Bernie let the Clinton campaign take over his Twitter account uh, to essentially send out messages to all his delegates and supporters. Bernie Sanders is an empty suit. Bernie Sanders um, ain't the same Bernie Sanders that we once that, uh, uh, loved he and knew. Seat, he'd be, he'd oh, be lost in the political wilderness like uh, Ralph Nader or all go back to George McGovern, who also defied the Democratic Party establishment. And after the Democratic Party elite uh, allied itself with the Republican Party elite, to destroy him in the presidential race, they took away his Senate seat. They, they, uh, and he was, he was gone. So they know, they know, you know, very, very well the, the price they would pay for that kind of defiance. They don't want to pay it, and that's the problem. Uh, I, I agree. Um, it is, it is the party structure, I believe, that uh, that that holds them back and keeps them from insisting on any kind of change uh, that, that they run on, it, it certainly seems like they are more afraid of the party and the party's ability to, uh, uh, to deny them uh, re-election uh, than they are accountable to the movement. Um, and that's a big problem, and I think it's a big problem as well uh, when it comes to the organizations that have kind of sprung up to support progressive Democrats particularly in the wake of 2016. And so I was the National Political Outreach Coordinator on the Bernie 2016 campaign. Um, I helped start our revolution after that as a Felix Royal Manager. And I saw after the Bernie 2016 campaign the way, the way that Bernie inspired millions of people to try to go into the Democratic Party to try to change it, inspired the kind of rise of a new generation of progressive organizations, our revolution, bringing Congress, just as Democrats, BSA, which grew tremendously in the late of 2016. But it seems that these organizations ha are having a fundamental problem of attempting, when it comes to actually keeping the progressives that they've elected, even the people, I mean, to begin with, the Democratic Party has just blocked the vast majority of people that those organizations have attempted to run, and so there's still only kind of a small uh, a couple handful of progressives in Congress. You know, that's probably a generous interpretation. But of the ones that are of the ones that are there, I think there's an even deeper problem that has become apparent that some of these organizations don't want to deal with, and that some of some progressive Democrats don't want to deal with, and that is the question of accountability. How do you actually hold the members of Congress who you have elected, the politicians who you have elected to the Democratic Party, accountable? Because it's become clear that once they get there, there is a machinery within the Democratic Party that begins to act on them. There are all kinds of different forms that the party has, levers of control, whether it's threats of primary, uh, massive pressure, to support uh, Blue Dog Democratic incumbents um, and help you know, protect their needs to protect the majority of the legislature. We recently saw AOC, for example, she recently gave um, thousands of dollars to establishment Democrats who are actually fighting against Medicare for All only two years after being there and saying that these are the exact same people who we were going to primary in mass. She's now contributing to their campaign to help shore up their position, committee assignments, which we've seen Pelosi and the corporate Democrats actually take away from AOC and take away from other progressives as a way of, of punishing them and disciplining them. And so, you know, I kind of want to ask you about that dynamic, that when it comes to these organizations, it doesn't seem to be a problem that they had anticipated, but I, I, I want to see what you think about that. Well, it, it, it's, it really comes down to whether the Democratic Party is a reformable organization, number one, or whether it's even at its core democratic, and it's neither. And, and this has just been a misread on the part of progressives. But of course, that misread is perpetrated uh, by the Democratic Party establishment, uh, you know, whether they allow Kucinich to run or uh, Bernie or anyone else. Uh, the idea is to uh, give expression to uh, those kinds of issues, but then in the end, once the presidential not 
when he is selected or anointed, as Biden was, to correct the uh, the progressive wing of the Democratic Party or progressives back into the Democratic Party full. And, of course, it works every time because as the political situation devolves, the monstrosities that are coughed up, uh, you know, whether it's Bush or Trump, uh, become worse and worse. And believe me, this next time around is going to be much worse than Trump. Um, so uh, it, it's diminishing returns. Uh, and, uh, um, you know, these, these figures are careerists. In the end. They, they, AOC and Bernie and all the rest of them. Um, they're not temperamentally or morally fit to lead this fight, uh, which is a fight against the ruling elites, which includes the Democratic Party establishment itself. Um, and 